Hey guys, welcome to this brand new series on the Django Web Framework for Python. So the Django Web Framework allows you to use Python in order to build your website. So it's a very, very powerful framework and I think the best way to learn it is probably just to get straight in and start with the project. So I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of Python or you've seen my Python for Beginners tutorial series already prior to watching this video series because you are going to need to know a fair bit of basic Python like so that you don't get confused when I say for loops or while loops or variables or strings or classes or anything like that because you might see quite a lot of that stuff and if you don't know what a function is then uh, you might get slightly lost or it might take you a little bit longer or you might have to rewatch some of these videos so with that said let's just go ahead and get started so you can see on my screen here I'm just going to open up item which is what I use to uh, use my terminal on a Mac and I'm just going to exit full screen so that you can see it a little better and this is just the same as if I were to type terminal so terminal is what's installed on a Mac by default but then I prefer to use item2 just because it's a much better uh, program for running uh, the terminal although they do do the same thing so if you just fancy using the terminal by all means go ahead and use that but I'm just saying that's what I use. So now that we've got that out of the way, the next thing we're going to do is really start our Django project. So to do that, I'm first going to uh, change into the folder that I want to create the project in. Because when we create this Django project, it's going to create uh, a, a folder and file structure. So we're going to want to be in the right place before it just puts that somewhere. Otherwise, we won't know where it put it. Or, you know, if we're in the documents folder, we, we don't want that project directly in our documents folder then that will be in the wrong place and we'll have to move it which is a bit of a pain so well it's one it's one more command anyway so I'm just going to change into my Django folder which is where I want to keep this particular Django project and if you want to see in any of the files and folders in this uh, current directory you can do ls and that will just say okay get me all the names of the folders and files within this current directory, so my Django folder. So I already have a Django project called test and I'm just going to do Django admin start project and I'm just going to say tutorial. So what that's done is it's started all the, it's given me all the files and folders that I need to be able to create my Django project. So that is the folder that contains the entire project so we can change into that folder and then I'm just going to open it in my text editor you can use Vim or you can use Sublime Text or PyCharm or even the uh, default editor that you get with your Python installation off python.org although I don't recommend it because it's not very good it's not very fully featured but by all means use what you're comfortable with so I use Atom personally but feel free to use anything else so if you can't run Django Admin Start Project it might be because you don't have Py Python or Django installed. If you haven't got Python installed you can see uh, my video that I did on that but otherwise I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install Django because you might not have that installed yet either. So if you're using a virtual environment then you won't want to do sudo but in this case because I'm not um, you're going to need to do that and you're going to need the administrator password so if you don't have administrator access then it's going to be difficult to install things using pip. But I'm going to do sudo pip install and then Django. So what that's going to do, well it's going to ask for your password because sudo means super user do so it needs that administrative privilege. Uh, but then what's it, what it's going to do is just install Django for you if you haven't got it. So I'll just type my password and you can see here it says requirement already satisfied because I've already got it installed, but hopefully for you that should install it fine. So I've just opened up this tutorial folder in Atom, which is my text editor of choice, and you can see we've got a couple of different things inside this main tutorial folder. So we've got the folder again, which is the same name as the main project folder, and we've got a few files inside that. So we've got manage.py, which we're going to use in a minute, and we've got WSGI. So this is the file where your application will start when you're in a production environment. So on the web server, this is where uh, your web server is going to look first to be able to decide what it needs to do with your Django application. And this is just saying, look at the settings file, essentially. So 
we can look at the settings file. So there's lots of stuff in here which you don't really need to know just yet, except for maybe the installed apps which we're going to get to shortly as soon as we start to build out this application we're going to need to use the installed apps uh, or at least add something to this Python list here and that's pretty much all you need to know on the settings file. You can read these comments because Django is very helpful with giving you links to the appropriate documentation where necessary and everything like that. Uh, it even showed us how we, st we how we started this project in case you forget that command so it's right there and also the version of Django that I'm using. So lots of useful information but the next thing it's going to look at is the URLs. So this is really saying anything that's in that URL bar at the top of your browser uh, is defined in this file. So right now we've just got one for admin and this is the default Django admin which is a whole separate video in itself if not more. So it's very very powerful in other words. So let's go ahead and run this project to see what happens if we just run the default project because you know is it even going to work? So let's do Python manage.py, not manage, manage.py run server. So run server is a Django command that just says run the local Django development server on your computer so you can pretty much preview the code that you've written before you then deploy it on your live server, which is going to be accessible by the internet. So let's go and run that server and this is what the Django server looks like. You're, not, you're going to get quite familiar with this over the next few tutorials because this is how we are going to be able to test our code. So to just explain what this is, you can ignore the red for now because it just means we haven't set up our database properly. You don't have to worry about that because we're not really using a database at the moment. All we've got is the basic template. So it also says what version of Django we're using and also where our settings file is. So if you remember, I noticed I, we talked about the settings file so this is in the main project root and then it's in the tutorial folder and then in the settings.py so that's where it's looking for its settings and it says starting development server at this so if we go to this address in our web browser, I'm just going to use Google Chrome here and we can see if everything works that we get the default Django template. So this is the final page that pretty much says our project is up and running and we can now continue to work on it because this is what the basic template looks like and it really gives you a foundation for you to be able to completely customize and build your own website. And one more thing I thought I might as well show you. The URLs that we were talking about and how it defines all the URLs in the web browser. So it's got admin in it at the moment. So if I do forward slash admin, that gets us to another web page, which is also there by default. And this is a very, very powerful one, which I'll be able to talk about quite a bit in future videos, albeit a bit later on. So that's a basic introduction to the Django web framework for Python. In the next one, we're gonna actually start to write some Python code and customize our basic template that we have at the moment. So I think we're gonna change this homepage and make it unique, make it our own.